We move to the 80s era. And ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Wayne Bannister. Thanks, Craig. I'll have to get the glasses out. I'm getting a bit older these days. Uh, look, when Tommy rang me about this day, uh, I'd sort of uh, been telling my sons and, and daughter about uh, my association with Parkside. Uh, matter of fact, an hour ago, Jordan, my son, rang me and said, uh, is this your club, Dad? Out of uh, Collingwood YCW, uh, South Morang, Alvington, uh, Parkside, Northcote Park, is this your club? And I said, I suppose it is. Because it's my warmest memories of my football playing and coaching career. In uh, 1983, uh, Alfington Amateurs folded. Uh, Parkside offered us a chance to, uh, to play, but uh, the uh, VAFA would only allow three players in in 1984. Some players stood out. I think there were seven or eight that stood out for 12 months. Uh, so they could play the next year. A few others went to Northcote Park, including myself as assistant coach, and a lot of others just give it a, well, gave, gave it away. Um, in 1987, I had lunch with Tommy Johnson, and a lot of the people know Tom. Uh, you could never say no after Tommy's luncheons. Fantastic person, Tommy. Uh, his white boots was still in my mind and the photo on the wall. In 1988, uh, you know, I coached uh, Parkside. We recruited uh, some fantastic players. Uh, there was already some great players at the club, but uh, players like Sedgwick, uh, Vincent Torrio, uh, Leo Panjari improved that, that year. Had a great player in Sturgis on the wing who could mark with the Ruckman. Sansonetti, you know, all the Hollywoods, they were fantastic. Uh, we had players like Rowie and Shirl who were, you know, fantastic. We had Mark Bradley, Nick Mitchell and uh, Lindley Cow. You know, look, we had a great team that year. Uh, but now we went to a training camp pre-season at uh, Bacchus Marsh. I think it was probably the hardest thing I'd ever done. A few of the committee men joined in that day and uh, I think a few of them couldn't walk for a week afterwards. During the 1988 season, we always, when things were going bad, we thought about that training camp. How when we went in our groups, we worked as, as a team and uh, we, we never gave up. Um, so we come, went into the season full of confidence against Balloon Temple Stowe. And that's Stowe, Peter Evans, not Stone. That's for you. Uh, so we played Balloon Temple Stowe and we thought, you know, walk up, start. We've got this fantastic team and we'll just run all over them. Well, we got a shock. They flogged us, beat us by nine goals. Mark Sherlock never stopped crying all night. That's how he got his name, Tissues. At the end of the night, I said, what have I got myself into? There was Bimbo and Rowie wrestling on the ground. Uh, but in the end, we just had to regroup and uh, start again. We sort of had a, had a, a team that... Uh, a lot of running players, a lot of strong players, but uh, we just sort of started to gel together as a team. We came to about the 13th or 14th game and we played Terry Panola. Now, they were a pretty good team, good young side. Their coach was, you know, a rated coach. Fancied himself as, you know, going to AFL, VFL next. Well, Terry 
were surprised when Parkside thrashed them by 14 goals, and they were third on the ladder. He never recovered that coach, because I met him later on, he, he ended up coaching theory. The Q game was uh, a big game for us. They were undefeated, 17 wins in a row. They had Carlton selectors down there to watch their centre-half forward. And we had a guy named Wayne Buckhorn who came and played with us the last six games and destroyed their centre-half forward. They had a bloke named Guzzi who kicked the goal in the last quarter. Would, uh, the count would never been able to kick a goal that long before. It virtually stopped Q in their tracks and gave us a chance to believe that we could do it. Second semi, we had uh, the guy came down from back of Smash and the amateurs were calling for us to run out in the ground. They called us again. One of the officials walked in and there was 20 players trading punches with focus pads. He just shook his head and walked out. We went onto the ground, they won by 10 goals and did the same thing in the grand final. It was a magnificent year for us, but we got reports in the last, four, uh, the last game, oh, sorry, the last quarter, four reports which just it sort of cost us dearly when we went into A grade. We lost our captain who went to, over to Europe, which was a big blow to us. So we had to go in, in 1989 to A grade with a few players short and, as I said, without our captain. Uh, it took us a while. Uh, it, about the fifth game, I think it was sixth game, before we won a game, it was against Old Zavs. It was a magnificent... To beat them, Old Zavs at their ground was a magnificent achievement for all the players. It was a fantastic day for the club. Uh, we had few reports after this and injury, and Jack and I had to end up playing in the first of that year, last game against or second last game against Dormond. We I think we had 18 out, and I had to play with my son. I remember kicking the ball out to the half forward flank, and he yelled out, "Dad, Dad!" And the bloke who was on me turned around and said, "That's not your son." I said, "No, no, no." <laughs> so at quarter time, I said. Please call me Wayne, not Dad. <laughs> uh, we battled through that season. Uh, look, it was magnificent to be in A grade. A lot, a lot of clubs wrote letters about us that we didn't belong in our competition. Old Scotch refused to play us. But they come down and, and took videos of us, you know, what was the secret to this club. And look, I was proud of the, the way the players went about it that year. They were fantastic. 1990, we battled all year, and it came down to the last game against Old Brighton, which is, without a doubt, the highlight of, of my career as a player and a coach. Because that day, Jack and I played in the seconds, Jackie King, and to play with Jack is one of my highlights as well. We were playing against Saru, who was a coach of the first, was playing in the seconds. He was six inches taller than Old Brighton's Ruckman, but wouldn't go in the ruck. So Jack turned around to him and said, Get in the ruck, you canine! <laughs> Frothing at the mouth, uh, I could not stop laughing. Uh, Jack was fantastic, and he was the most... We were just talking about it before. He probably had 15 handballs in his whole career. But as far as a competitor, to win, I think it was a B-grade best and fairest in a comp at 40 years of age, there's no finer person that I've known. Um, that day, we were 15 points down at three-quarter time, going against the wind. Uh, we had Martin Penrose with a shoulder that was gone. We had... Mark Bradley, who was playing on the state centre-half forward, who had carved him up in the first quarter and a half, and I said to Jack, tell him he's coming off if he gets another kick. Mark was magnificent. At three-quarter time, we were 15 points down at Old Brighton. You couldn't even win at Old Brighton with your best side and with a 10-goal uh, start in the last quarter. It was my worst speech, I reckon, or the quietest speech that I'd ever made. But I just said that we'd, we'd gone 
on this ride together. We'd, we'd been through A grade, back to B grade. It all came down to this game. If we lost this game, it would, would have been all for nothing. You know, I looked at the players and I walked away and let the players talk. What they gave in the last quarter, Martin Penrose, uh, Robbie Gard, uh, Louis and Sierra, Sed Sedge, uh, the players showed courage that day that I've never seen by, by a group of players. Uh, they were warriors like Kirk from, from the Swans. They were better than that. They were fantastic. And they never gave in. And, and that's, that was the, the, whole, the whole strength of Parkside at that time. You know, they'd never give in. No matter, no matter what position they were in, they, could, they had fighting qualities. And these players, I've never been proud of a group of players in my life. Jack Maxwell, after that win, presented me with a pump that he would never let me use throughout the season. And for Jack to give me that pump meant more to me than anything. He was fantastic. But we walked up to the club. There was uh, upstairs, there was Saru and also Simon O'Donnell, who just gave us a, a warm greeting, a bit cold. We drank all their drink, we won the raffle, and Mal Rudd knocked all their jumpers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, during, during that game, Balloon Templestowe had rang after the game to see how much we got beat by. Uh, one of our blokes answered the phone. Oh, you wouldn't believe there was silence on the other end. Phil Stevens had gone back to tell the amateurs that Parkside had gone to C grade. He was upset too. Look, there's, there's a few highlights. I just, I, they told me eight minutes and I'm nearing that now. The training camp, the log carry was a fantastic thing for the players. That When we got to the top of the hill with the logs, we had to, you know, like one bloke would go to the top and the one at the back would, would have to drop off, have a rest and then come up again. And then they moved the bus. They moved the bus 1K and we all stopped. And we said, well, what do we do? You know, we, we can't go on. But we managed to, you know, get ourselves together and let's go run to the bus. I think that was a turning point for us in that season, that we made it. We were right up to the last person across the line and you're only as good as your last person. Not, not, not the first six, but your last person. And that was important for us. Uh, Sansonetti going over a barrel at the training camp. I didn't think he'd come out of it, even though he went around the other side. Uh, Putter, we had a practice match. Putter got knocked out by a, a football and refused to get up. <laughs> when Jack went to the first aid box to get some liniment, which was the Wit Witch Doctor's uh, first aid box, only to find Playboys. Uh, the Premiership night, which was fantastic, it was a, one of the best nights. It was good in one way, but it was bad in another because our seconds got beat by a point. And to see their players and to see Jack crying in the shower before we went out and coached the first, I'll never forget. And finally, went hard on, went for a ball in the seconds, missed the ball, missed the opposition, no contact, and still got up limping. I'll never forget my time at Parkside and uh, our secret to winning games was that we were close on and off the ground. We were a hard tackling side who at times were very intimidating but the most important factor was courage when it was needed and could never be questioned. And the players of today have to remember that, that you're never gone, a few blokes have got to step up when, when they need to. Just before I finish, I'd just like to read out a few, few names that uh, I think have you know, been great people at, at the club. A few, few have passed away, but I'm sure the people who are related to them will remember them. Dick Grummich, Dick Grummich, Jack Maxwell, Kevin Clark, Albie Bolger, Tommy Johnson, Wusher, Snowy, Mumsy, 
Billy Salerno, Moose, Trumper, Billy Chilcott, Old Man Bradders, Legend, Sharpie, and most of all, Jackie King. Thanks very much. Thank you, Wayne. Well done.